Thank you, David. That's beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everyone to worship on this crisp Sunday morning. Uh, this is the third Sunday in October. It's also um, Laity Sunday. Hence, I'm up here. This uh, day calls, us, calls the church to celebrate the ministry of Christians of all ages in the home, workplace, congregation, community, and world. Everyone has a role in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord in deeds, in words that will heal and will free. That's from our book of worship. Our announcements this morning, if you will. Looking forward tells you everything you need to know, per se. Although, today is annual conference, uh, charge conference at 3 p.m. at St. Paul on Summit Street. Uh, trunk or treat is the 29th. Uh, candy, candy, candy. There's and trunks. And trunks, if at all possible. So, coats for Christ. And um, remember that the uh, offering plates are in the back, front, and forward. Uh, so uh, please do that. And thanks for the to the gents who worked on stuff outdoors. Um, and there is a sign-up sheet for truck treat and there's also a sign up sheet for All Saints Sunday and that's the 5th of, of November um, please remember to do that uh, if you can now let's turn ourselves to worship let us pray prayer this morning I took from Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, all, O oh God, are gifts of your grace. We gather to sing our praises and to tell you of your virtues in the midst of our neighbors. Your commandments are just, they give us direction. Your covenant encompasses us and in Christ knits us together. We give you all honor as we rejoice in your glory. Amen. Amen. If you will, please stand for our opening hymn and for the Apostles' Creed.
church, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. I have missed you. I have missed you. Um, as many of you know, last week I was out uh, doing the two-day breast cancer walk. Um, I raised a little over twelve hundred dollars uh, to participate, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't finish the full thirty. I won't lie. The first day was twenty miles. The second day was ten. Um, the first day I stopped just shy, or just, I guess it was just shy of 16, so it was a little bit more than 15 miles. I just ran out of steam. Stopping at 10 miles for lunch was a mistake. <laughs> I should have probably just kept going. Um, and I didn't quite get enough fuel, so uh, that was on me. Um, but then the next day I did the full 10 and then some, so I finished, I was done. <laughs> Uh, I was telling Walt before the service, I did a little bit more than 26 miles um, last weekend. And for me, that's a huge accomplishment. What you don't know is when I was going through treatment, I couldn't make it to the mailbox and back a couple days. That was my goal, was just to get to the mailbox, get the mail, turn around, come back, and I would sit on the stairs before I left to go to the mailbox. And the mailbox is only two car car lengths deep. It's not like some of the houses, you know, when we were growing up where it's a big long trail to get down. No, this is two car lengths is what I can park in my driveway. And my goal was to just get down the stairs. I would sit and I would look at it and I was like, I am coming for you. <laughs> and then I would go and get the mail and I would come back and I would sit on the stairs and some days I would cuss the mailbox and some days I was like, I got gotcha. you. I'm going to take a nap and I would crawl up the stairs and go back upstairs and I would sleep so I just want to say thank you and I want to let you know I did get a gift this morning and I'm thankful for the prayers but when I got to church today wasn't here on Wednesday but I got a we wear pink in October shirt and I don't know who left it but I just want to say thank you and I'm wearing it with great pride today I don't know that I can get away with wearing it to the charge conference but I'm praying about it I might I might wear it anyway, and if somebody asks me about it, I'm going to say it's a gift from my church. I did the two-day, but I want you to know it was a huge accomplishment, and I am thankful for the prayers that you guys said for me while I was doing it, and I want you to know that I did carry a list of members with me, and I did pray for y'all. I won't lie, there were times, though, that I was just like, just one foot in front of the other, right, you know? I'm um, just trying to get through it, but I did spend a great deal of time in prayer. I felt rejuvenated in my spiritual walk, and I am happy to be back with y'all this week. A um, couple things I did want to say, just quick announcement-wise. In your, um, on the back of the church board, there is a 40 days of prayer and fasting. They're not asking us to fast 40 days, okay? But there is a 40-day time of prayer um, that the North Georgia Conference Bishop has asked us to do. Um, I have signed up. They are asking for us to... Um, the Northeast District will be doing a fast. They don't expect us to fast every day the week of October 26th through the 30th. And I would encourage you to just pick a day if you can Obviously, if you're on medication or have something else going on, it's okay. You don't have to participate. But if you're able, then I would encourage you to do a day of fasting. Um, and just be in prayer for the church, the church worldwide, for Israel. Um, there's just a lot going on in our world. And our world needs the Lord. So... 
I have that to say add to this morning just as we go into a time of prayer. So when we think about the last week, we think about God's attributes. I've already shared where I've seen God. God was with me on this walk. And I, I am thankful um, for his endurance, for his love, for his compassion. Because there was a lot of compassion on that 30-mile journey. Where have you seen God at work this week? Faithful teacher. Faithful teacher. Anybody else? Protector. Protector. What do we have to lift up today as a prayer of thanksgiving? Kim and I are going to be grandparents. <laughs> You're going to be grandparents? No way! Yeah. That's so exciting! How far along? Well, it's in April, so... So April's the due date. Yeah, April. And it's a girl. <laughs> it's a girl? <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. Oh, how sweet. That is awesome. So we have a new grandbaby. Good luck coming. with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I say too. <laughs> oh, but that's super exciting. Super, super exciting. What else? What else do we have be, to be thankful for? Cooler weather. Yes, cooler weather. I enjoyed walking out of my office this morning and walking over here and just being in the brisk, cool air. There is something really refreshing about that. I'm thankful for these two. <laughs> yes, you got your grandbabies with you this morning, right? They are on fall break, as are many in the area. So we are thankful for fall break and the time that we get to spend with our kiddos um, in between. All right. As always, the altar is open. This is God's house, and it is your place to worship with him. If you ever feel led, please come up and either stand or kneel at the altar. Um, but you can also pray in your seats. Um, you don't have to. You can pray anywhere, right? That's the beautiful thing. So no matter, no matter where you are, um, I hope that you'll stop and take a moment and join us in prayer. Let us pray. Adonai... You are the Lord of our lives, and we are your servants. You have uniquely created each of us and called us together so that we may strengthen and support one another in the work of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to embrace our differences as we live in covenant with you and with one another. Lord, we pray for the leadership of the church. We ask that you would fill them with your spirit of wisdom, deepen their faith and assist them as they seek to discern where you would lead us. Lord, you are worthy of our praise and deserving of our worship as you are holy and just, merciful and loving. We thank you, God, for the ministries of music and art within our congregation. We pray for those who enrich our worship with song and creativity. We ask, Lord, that you fill them with the Spirit so that they may partner with you in creating that which is beautiful and inspiring. Lord, we thank you for the gift of teachers within our congregation. We celebrate their gifts when they are offered formally in classrooms and in meeting spaces and when they are given spontaneously in the teachable moments of life, may we seek to learn from one another. Lord, we also give thanks for the people who pray in the congregation, those in the prayer ministry and those in the card ministry as we celebrate and remember those in need. There are so many in the world who are sick, hurting, and lonely. Lord, today we lift up those who are dealing with illness, with loss and feeling alienated and fearful. Lord, today we lift up our brothers and sisters in Israel. Calvin Hall. Gideon Hughes. Earl 
Odell. Jerry Hubach. Lord, hear our prayer. Yahweh, you see us and provide us with all that we need. And we thank you for calling us together and giving us all that we need to minister in your name. We ask, Lord, that you would bless each person here today. Help us to value each person and respect what he or she offers in our community as we grow and serve together as your people. May we grow closer to you and to one another, and we grow in love and live in hope and serve with compassion. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that we have been, we have to be your hands and feet in the community. And we especially thank you for the time and talents that are given to us as we feed the hungry here in our community with the South Hall Food Pantry and Good News at Noon. When we minister to families with events like Trunk or Treat, the adults, Christmas party, the children's Christmas party, and caroling to our homebound members. When we warm the children with coats for Christ and we do our baskets of thanks. When the hospitality committee, the men of our church, gather to serve you in community and in maintaining the buildings to make sure that we have a space that is welcoming and safe for all. Lord, I am thankful for the ability to worship and for the mission committees who help lead us in the ways that you have called us to worship in the community with one another and in community to support your work throughout the world. Lord, thank you for all who are present and for, gift, for the gifts that they bring. May each of us give freely and fully as we devote ourselves to continued ministry in the continued ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
cute. That's beautiful. <laughs> You have me this morning. <laughs> Say a prayer. I am going to pull this stool over because I need to sit down. I had surgery on the leg and uh, I can't stand up that long. Okay? Lord, be with us all as we hear, as we seek, and as we ask. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If Jesus came today, the title of uh, the message is Any Questions? Uh, if Jesus came today and He's standing right beside you, what would you do? David helped us with the uh, prelude. What would you do? Would you know it was Jesus? Would you ask to see his hands? Would you ask to see his feet? How about his side, the one where he was pierced? Does his clothes look like you think he would be wearing? Would he have on his sandals? How about his hair? How about his beard? If you could ask any question whatsoever, what would it be? In our daily bread devotional on September the 17th, the reading title that day was, Any Questions? Scripture was Luke 18, verses 35 through 43. And as I reread that question over and over, Jesus asked the blind man, he asked him a specific question. Now the blind man told him what he wanted, but, well, what he would like. But Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And that was the question that started me. <laughs> I like to read. David and the choir will tell you that I even like to read hymnals. So... I started reading and asking others the question, so what would I ask Jesus? Very different answers. Because we're all different. We, we don't all think the same alike. We don't all like the same foods. We, we're different, but we're gods regardless. There are no incorrect answers. And I'd like to thank everybody for letting me ask. This is a few of the answers that I got. How can I be a better person? What would Jesus have me do that I am not doing? Or why have you been so good to me? Why has He given me an opportunity to be here? Why has He given me the blessings of the week? The blessing of today? It's all been good. Every day is not perfect. In fact, there are days when it's better just to stay, oh, let me see, I like the bed. I also like the recliner. So... But he has been good, very good to me. What have I ever done to deserve your love? If you remember, uh, Chris Christopherson wrote a song of that very nature. What have I ever done to be worthy of what you've given me, what you've blessed me with? There are so many things that touch on that. Why did you die for me? For the world. Why? Did he love us so much that he understood his father the blessing of the ability to do what he did? I mean, the wings of a dove tells us that God sent his love, period. 
We have a window also that says that. Scripture tells us God was very pleased with Jesus, his son. The courage it had to take for Jesus to be nailed to the cross. The courage it took for him not to scream out when he was in the garden praying. We could not have done it. I couldn't have done it. But he did. He very, very much did. Am I being selfish when I pray for myself? When I ask him for things... Um, he says, it says in the Bible that he knows what we need before we need it. Before we ask for it even. So is it selfish to ask for things for ourselves? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I think that that's part of life. That we are attuned to ourselves altogether. But does he think I'm selfish? When people die suddenly, do they go to heaven right then? We don't know. Is there a waiting place? We don't know. Do we correctly understand any of the scriptures? When you read the Bible one time, two times, three times, or when you're looking up scripture totally, do you learn anything new? I do. We had questions. We had nine questions in our scripture this morning just straight off the bat. We had 20 questions altogether in the Sunday school lesson itself. Different types of questions. And we can't answer them totally. Even though we read the lesson and we read the scripture. It was Psalm 42. If we don't understand or correctly get the uh, scriptures, where do we go for that? Back to scriptures. <laughs> Back to prayer. Back to study. And this one really gets me because why do people mistreat others? I don't know. I can't find it where it says that we, we can mistreat others. It's a choice between good and bad. It's a choice that everyone makes, regardless of who you are, where you're from. It happens to be one of those things. There's so much hurt in this world. Why can't it be fixed now? I don't know. I have no answer myself. Will we meet God the Father in heaven? <laughs> I think it's pretty self-explanatory, don't you? We will meet God the Father. The Holy Spirit is with us now. Jesus is right beside us. God is right beside us. We've already met them. Why do we need to lay eyes on them? We've already felt them. Mm -hmm. Why can't you stay now? Why can't Jesus just stay with us right now? Right the way He is. Right the way He was when He was walking on this earth. Why can't He stay? Why can't He be with us? Why do some people live longer than others? <laughs> A 106-year-old lady uh, says that she's been blessed by God. But why do some live longer and some not? Because children 
die. Teens die. They've not been here long enough, but as we get older, as we get older every day, but why, why some longer than others? Now, this is a question that scared me a little bit because if I really believed it was Jesus, why would I want to ask anything? Wouldn't I just bow down and worship him? Why would we have to ask him a question? Why would we have to say anything? It would be a blessing just to be in the same space. In a physical space with Jesus Christ. A space where we could see his hands, his feet, his side, his sandals, his hair. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But if I really believed it was Jesus, why would I want to ask the question? When children pray, even young children, does this help God not to be so grieved about us adults? Does it comfort Him when children pray? And I know children pray. I've, I've heard children pray. They don't pray the way we do. They don't ask for, when they're young especially, they don't ask for things. They ask for comfort, for sleep, or help my mommy, or help my daddy, or help my sister. Would that not comfort God and don't you know he's grieved about us adults probably one too many times today even now the next one is when I read the Bible and learn something new is that because you want me to see all of the scripture and not just part or is it that you know I didn't get it in the first place Well, I don't believe that we do get any of it all the time. There are parts that we just can't understand. Not because we're stupid, not because we haven't read it, but just because we didn't see it. The situation changes, things change. We either get ill or someone passes away or there's a birth and there's joy and, and all. And we didn't get that to start with when we read that scripture. Uh, it didn't mean anything. It didn't cross our mind that it was that way. Hmm. So go back and reread. I believe that's what he'd tell us. Go back. Reread. Concentrate. Not just... Ask God first to show you what the wisdom is that He wants you to see. Now this last question is mine. I will tell you that it is absolutely mine. I didn't call any names because I don't want to do that to people. But my question would be, if Jesus was in front of me, and I... I think David would probably know what this is. When can I go home? When can I go to Beulah Land? Why? Why do I have to wait? Why can't I go with him right now? That would be my question. There are so many more questions to ask today. There are many in the Bible. The first question I found was in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. But it's not God. It's the serpent. It's the devil asking Eve, Who told you you'd die? Huh. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Well, the second question happened to be from God. 
chapter 3, verse 9, God asked Adam, Where are you? I can't see you. Where are you at? Ooh. Now, we know why Adam was hiding. Uh, I guess I would have hidden too if I'd have done what? It's kind of like uh, you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> Uh, or why did you eat that um, last piece of cake? And oh, but God was asking where Adam was on purpose because he already knew what they had done. But get this, Noah did not ask God one question. There's not one question in that whole scripture that Noah could have asked, uh, why do you want me to do this? Why do you want me to build an ark? Why do I have to get those animals? He didn't ask one question. He just did it. He built the ark. Even though his neighbors was laughing at him and probably his wife and children were going, we're supposed to do what? Oh, okay. Not one question. He did all the Lord commanded of him every time. Genesis, the third, fourth chapter, six, seven, eight, nine chapters will tell you that Noah did what God commanded of him. He didn't ask one question. Not one. Now Jesus wants us to ask questions. I, I've read that over and over. When he says, come to me, he's not saying, come to a religion. He's, not, he's issuing an invitation to you, to me, to God. He's, in, he's inviting us to know the Father. He's not asking us to join up. He's giving us a personal invitation to himself also. A Savior who emptied himself to save us. He's hanging on a cross because of us, because of me, because of my sin. He called ordinary people like us, all different, all with different opinions, different ideas of how this would work as a church in order to reunite us with God who created us and who gave us life and who blesses us every day. It's an invitation. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus says, Ask it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Those are Christ Jesus' words, words we can believe and live by. They're not just a promise. They're real. They don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to believe anything except what that book that precious Bible with instructions as to how not to live but how to live. And if you want to know, you have to ask. You have to seek. You have to study. You have to give time to God. Favorite TV shows are on reruns, this unit of TV. So there's no reason why I can't sit down in my recliner and take a Bible and read where I left off from. You don't have to read it all in one day. You don't have to read chapter and verse for every thing. Open it to where it says to start and go from there. Those words of Christ mean something. He repeats some of this in Revelation. In our daily bread devotional, there was a, another question. 
Why can questions be better conversation starters than direct statements? Is it that we are shy and we don't want to give an opinion until we think we have the right answer? But if someone comes up to you and asks you, are you a Christian? Can you open your mouth and say yes? Those questions are important. Direct statements are sometimes used in ways that don't reflect what they actually mean. But the question goes to the heart and the mind. There are many hymns written by people who prayed, studied, and was guided by the scriptures. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2 reads, We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He's standing beside us. If he were standing right here today in the form that we would see in the Bible, we would know him. We would know Jesus Christ. Period. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you for your Son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you would not destroy the whole creation again. We ask you to be with those who couldn't be with us for whatever reason. And we ask you to please bless all the, this congregation as we leave here today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And let's all stand and sing. If you would please stand for my Jesus, I love you. And please sing this to Jesus. benediction is from Philippians chapter 4 4 through 7 rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice let your gentleness be known to everyone the Lord is near do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to God 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go in peace.